Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Welcome to our Sunday ministrations and honor and a privilege to be here again. This is Living in the World International Church, a church where we preach Christ undiluted. If you're joining us for the very first time, our prophetic theme for the month of October is my month of double portion. The Bible says in the books of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7, it said, instead of your shame, you shall receive a double portion. Instead of your disgrace, you shall rejoice in your inheritance. And so will you inherit double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Now, God has assured us in his word uh, and we know his word are yea and amen. So I want you to understand that this month you shall get double in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, our series of teaching is double for my trouble and our topic this morning is actually tied to the peace in the storm. So if you want to get yourself acquainted with a series of teaching which has preceded today's sermon, please visit our website which is www.litwick.org and get yourself acquainted with a series of teaching. I believe you shall be blessed. Now, peace in the storm. Life can be uncertain at times. Life can be overwhelming, out of control, and things seem to be in chaos or disorder seems to be, seems, seems to be the order of the day. Now, when storm comes, storm brings along two or three friends, fear, anxiety, and um, temper or confusion. Because when storms are around, many of us seem to be confused and we don't know what to do. All the knowledge that we possess seems to go out of the window and emotion seems to govern the way we do things. We point accusation fingers at people that might not that might actually be innocent, strive anger, and all kind of emotion begins to arise when there's no peace. But the one that is called the Prince of Peace, the Bible says in the books of Isaiah 25, verse 4, that God is our refuge from the storm. What we need to do is get our eyes off the storm and start looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, because he would deliver us from the storm. Now, sometimes it might not deliver us from the storm, it might deliver us through the storm, because he wants to bring out new characters or develop our character to make us whole or to make us conform to the image of Christ. If you study the scriptures carefully, you'll discover that Jesus Christ was in the boat with his disciples and there was a there was storm around, overwhelming storm that seems to want to capsize the, the boat they were in. But Jesus was asleep. Perhaps we had ought to take cue, for he is an example that we ought to follow. And I believe that this morning's sermon will open your eyes to new levels of understanding. And whatever storm in your life, God himself shall speak peace into it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for peace. Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you thus far you have helped us this month of October. Thank you for the year 2016. And thank you as we are running up 2016 and bringing us safely into 2017. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise. My Father, my God, I want to pray this morning that we... There shall be peace in our lives, in every facet of our lives, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And as we sit at your feet this morning, we ask, O oh Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have the feeling of being powerless when we're in the storm of life. We feel that we're abandoned because um, we can't see nobody around us to help us. And the fear of the unknown sometimes overwhelms us because we don't know what tomorrow brings. And in this, in this situation, anger sometimes begins to take over. And sometimes we might actually question our faith. With the present state of the world at the moment, I mean, unstable economical conditions around the world, the foreign exchange is dropping, inflation is rising, people are losing their job. All kind of contrary wind seems to be blowing. And then you begin to ask yourself, how can I get double for my trouble in this month when everything around me seems to be saying contrary to what actually is going on or what you're saying as the prophetic word of the month? Now, 
the notion or the thoughts that grows through our head is this. Lord, you have the power to do all things. Why don't you fix it and make it better? Why do you seem absent? Why do you seem passive? Why do you seem uncaring? Why is it like you're sleeping in the middle of my storm and everything around me seems to be going in chaos? You see, once we begin to get this kind of thoughts run through our minds, we will find ourselves at a disadvantage when we confront the enemy. Because what the enemy is doing is actually trying to separate us from our greatest allies. And I pray that God in his infinite mercy and wisdom will help us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, number one, sometimes storms of life are correcting storms. I call those correcting storms. There are different types of storms that we face. I can broadly categorize them under two main headings, correcting storms which is the first one. And those ones we can see in the life of Jonah. When we study the books of Jonah, we discover there was a correcting storm taking place. God had sent jo Jonah to a particular city, but he, re he refused to go and he was heading somewhere else. No problem. On his way down there to a different place, God simply let the storm rage. That it seems overwhelming that some, somehow the people in the boat began to cry and asking who, who sinned, what did we do? And until Jonah was thrown out of the boat into the sea, there was, no, there was no calm. Sometimes there are some people that need to leave the boat of our life before they can be calm around us. Now the second kind of storm that you might face is actually called a perfecting storm. Now the perfecting storm might look like a storm to the outsider, but somehow is with the, uh, God is using it for our own good. You see, sometimes Jesus Christ allows certain things to happen to certain people because he, he wants them to actually develop certain skills or characteristics between within them. Sometimes God does not protect us from the storms of life, allows us to go through it because he wants to strengthen our character. If everything around us were done for us by God before we ever learn anything, our faith will always remain at the child level or at the elementary level. We would never grow in our faith and our roots will not be um, deep enough to withstand any storm of life. You know, many of us are in the habit of calling our pastor up when we have challenges. And there's nothing wrong in that. He's, he's your shepherd and he's someone that looks after you. Um, but at every little thing, you call your pastor up. I mean, you see a cockroach in your house, you call up the pastor and say, I think the devil's attacking me because I can see the cockroach. I mean, you, and then in church, you sing about tramping, under the de or tra tramping over the devil and the devil's under your feet. But you're afraid the cockroach is in your own house. When you see ants gather together because there's sugar around, you think the devil's attacking you. And this kind of things is not building our characters. It's not strengthening us spiritually. So some storms of life come upon us or come into us or come into our lives because God wants to strengthen our character and take us to a new level of faith. Because then the perfecting work of God can be perfected in our lives. Trials have ways of strengthening characters. I mean, you can read this in the books of James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. The testing of our faith produces patience, which brings us to maturity and perfection. Number two, perfecting storm sometimes teaches us God's will. Many of us sometimes, we go contrary to his will. God's ways are not our ways. Some troubles only bring us closer to, um, to God. Many of us do not know God until we find challenges of life. I mean, we hardly pray to him when everything is going hunky-dory. We are too busy for Sunday services. We are too busy for midweek services. We are too busy for prayer meeting. But as soon as there's a shaking in our um, peace, we run to God. That's one of the ways that God lends or lets us get closer to him. Because in troubles, we seem to find God um, the, as our best friend. 
Number three is that we need to experience God in a new way. We need to be we need to experience God in a new way. And storms are opportunities given to us by God to experience his, his work, his power, his salvation, his victory over death. To give us lessons, to give us testimonies. You can't have testimonies without going through a test. There are many things in my life that has taken place. And many challenges that I face, many battles that I have fought. When I look back at them, I always thank God for them. Now, if someone told me about spiritual warfare, I would laugh because I've fought spiritual battles in many ways. A soldier is not qualified for promotion if he has not gone through certain requirements. And you see, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. If God is the one promoting and marking the paper and giving you promotion in the things of the spirit, then you cannot cheat your way to the top. It doesn't matter who, how many pastors you know. How many people lay hands on you and bring you to a level that you're not ready for? What I'm saying to you in effect is this. Some storms help us to experience God in a fresh way, in a new way, so that we can get promoted spiritually. Become, you know, generous in the Lord's army. That's why I encourage Christians that they should not give up in times of challenges. It really shows that we are soldiers of Christ. Number four, he helps us remember that we are seated with him in heavenly places above principalities and powers. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. You can't drown. God will not bring you thus far because he wants to leave you to drown. Oftentimes I tell people, if you cannot help me from the beginning to the end, please don't help me at all. And the reason I say that is this. Imagine somebody that is teaching you to swim. Or is helping you to get across a particular deep ocean, several feet deep beneath the ground. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he gets into the middle of the sea or in the middle of the river, which is, I know, 30 meters deep. And he says, you know what? I can't help you any longer. Please find your way. Now, you don't know how to swim, so you can't get back to the shore. And you don't know how to swim, so you can't get to the other side where you're trying to get to. And he wants to leave you. What are you going to do? You're likely going to drown. God forbid that. So what I'm trying to say in essence is God has not started to help you for, from the beginning of the year. Get to October. And now says, well, you know, friend, um, brothers or sisters or son or daughter, and I can't help you any longer. If Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. He that began a good work, he shall surely complete it. So he's ready to complete what he has begun. You have to be guided by his power. Now, you must learn to see God's provision in every situation that you are in. Because he has said in his word that he will never put more on you than you can bear. And you must hold on to his promises. Because sometimes the only thing that you have left in life is God's word. His words are yea and amen. And we must understand that as believers, this is our only confidence. It's a heaven and earth will pass away, but the words I've spoken unto you, none of them will go unfulfilled. That's why I tell Christians, I said, praying without the words of God is like watering the ground without any seed. So you must always find and stick to the words of God. They never change. I love the books of Psalm 107, verse 23 to 30. And I'll paraphrase it. He says, see the works of the Lord and his wonders, the wonders of uh, wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raised up a storm wind, a stormy wind, which lifted up the wave thereof. God can command the storm to rage and he can also command the storm to be still. When Jesus Christ got up, he simply said to the storm, be still. When, G when God wanted to correct no, Jonah, he simply told the storm to rage. So, whichever you're going through right now, I can assure you of one thing. The one that is with you, greater is he that's in you than the one that's in the world. First John chapter 4, verse 4, than the, the one that is raging against you. So, you can be rest assured that his presence, his provision, his power stays with you all the way through. 
That's why I often tell Christians, many Christians are in the middle of an ocean or in the middle of a river or middle of a lake, whichever one you desire, and they're sometimes still thirsty because they simply have not taken hold of the provision that's around them. He has promised that you will get to the other side. So regardless of whatever is going through, the highest mountain, the lowest valley, God will get you to the other side. His word is here and amen. And it will perfect everything that concerning you in the storm. It doesn't matter how raging the storm might be. Now, we have a few things we ought to do. One of them is that we must grow by his plan. God has a plan to enlarge us. God has a plan to increase us. In the books of Psalm 4, verse 1, it said, Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Many of us cannot see God's enlargement right now because we are so blinded by the things that's happening around us that we no longer consider the things that God is doing in our lives. The first um, teaching in this series of teaching for this month is actually the mystery of gratitude. Regardless of whatever you're going through, God is always on your side. And God has accepted the full responsibility over your life if you will yield to him. Jesus made us know that in this life we will have trouble, but in him we have peace. So, John chapter 16, verse 33. So, regardless of whatever you're going through, God will give you peace. Psalm 119, verse 165 says, Great peace have they that love your word or your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You keep them in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast, steadfast because he trusts in you. Now, do you trust in God? Because he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. So, you must understand that God has made provision for you and I. To finish this race of 2016 and finish it well. Sometimes he will allow certain things to happen to us. Because he wants to build us up. Sometimes he does those things to lure the enemy into a trap. I've said this before. You see, God does not lose the war. But he can lose some battles. I was studying the story of World War II, I believe it was Churchill and the Allies. They wanted to lure the, the armies, um, the German army, into a false sense of security. Now, they've intercepted their messages and they knew exactly what they were planning to do. Now, they were going to blow up the city of Leicester. They knew ahead of time that they were going to blow up the city of Leicester. And Churchill said, let them blow it up. People said, we know they're going to blow it up. He said, let them blow it up. He said, because once they blow it, if we evacuate or we begin to attack from that point, they will know that we actually know their signal and they will change it. It will take us a, a lot of more time to actually crack their new way of actually, um, or send the, their new message they have, they have been sending. Therefore, we might lose the war. Sometimes God does the same thing. He allows your enemies to be law into a sense of um, a sense of false security that they, they know they have trapped you. But believe me, he will always have the upper hand. Nothing catches God by accident. So don't see any defeat of your life as the end of your life because God is able to bring out glory from your story. As I begin to close... Challenges and difficulties are part of passes of life, but you must be able to see beyond the storm. Often I've told people that faith is not just being able to see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, but faith is the ability to see life outside the tunnel. For the tunnel is just a passing phase. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear, for thou is with me. God's presence makes the difference. 
bank account, regardless, um, job, situation, sickness, prosecution, worries. Let all that be under the feet of Jesus. For as long as Jesus is still on the boat of your life, God is assuring you of victory in the end because he is the shelter in the time of storm. As I begin to close, a few things I want us to always remember, regardless of whatever we've gone through, I want you to always keep this at the forefront of your mind, is that you need to remember God is always with you. You're not alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't blow your storms out of proportion. Many of us sometimes we try to, you know, exaggerate things, so to say. Cast your anchor and hold on to God. For God is unchanging. God remains the same. Resist the temptation to give in to fear. Fear, in fear, we make terrible decisions. Find the courage to remain steadfast in God. Remain strong, for God is our sufficiency. Find strength in God. For God, when you rely on the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, and always ask Him for direction. The words of God says, be still and know that I am God. What many of us do sometimes is run a helter-skelter and expect miracles to take place. I'm employing you by the message of God that you will be still in every situation that comes before you. That you will hear God clearly and then begin to proceed forward in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let me close by giving us about a few prayer points that I believe we should pray. Number one is that you should thank God for what he's doing right now in your life. Thank him that you are still alive and well for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Number two, ask him to open your eyes to see clearly where you are and with regards to where he's taking you to. Number three, ask him for divine strategies and tactics to be able to overcome the storm and challenges of life that you're facing. Number four, ask him for increase of courage to be able to face any challenges that come into your life. And I believe as you pray this prayer, God himself will show up on your behalf in the precious name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for peace. Thank you for joy. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, I pray for divine strategies. Lord, to be able to overcome every challenge of life that comes our way. And I pray that this week shall be the best week of our lives so far. Thank you, Father, for the double portion anointing. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.